Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Ford Explorer, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt TriFlex Trailer Brake Controller. We're going to be installing this in conjunction with the Curt Brake Controller Adapter Plug. So my first impressions of this brake controller here inside of our Explorer is I think it actually is going to look pretty good. It's got a really low profile design and doesn't take up a ton of space and that's really important today's newer cars everything can be really tight and you don't have a ton of room in this case we're able to mount it over here on the side and so we're not going to have to worry about our feet interfering with it at all or our knee banging into it when we're getting in and out of our car so that's always really nice so what i really like about this brake controller is how simple it is many different brake controllers can be really complicated and have a ton of different adjustments and settings and can be a little tricky to figure out and that's not the case with this one. It gives us those necessary adjustments, which means that the learning curve and how we're actually going to use this brake controller anytime we're pulling our trailer is going to be extremely straightforward and won't take you long to figure it out. So the first adjustment we can talk about is the sensitivity. And this is gonna be this little slide here on the side of your brake controller. So we're gonna have nine levels and the more you push it up towards you, you can see that the levels will increase. So what the sensitivity is going to do is say, it's going to change or adjust how aggressive the brakes are applied. So for example, say if you have a really heavy trailer or you're going up and down a lot of steep hills, it would be beneficial to level that up. That way the brakes will come on a little more aggressively. But if you're just cruising out on the highway with a light load, something like that, you can level that back because you won't need that extra aggressiveness whenever you apply the brakes. So this is a proportional brake controller, which in my opinion is really the only way to go. It just makes your stopping more smooth, safe, and predictable. So the way it's gonna work is the harder you apply the brakes inside of your Explorer, your trailer brakes are going to match it. So for example, say if you're just cruising and you hit a red light and you're just kind of coming to a slow stop, so you're kind of just riding the brake a little bit, your trailer brakes are going to do the same thing. But on the other hand, let's say if you're on the highway and you are at higher speeds and you really need to make a sudden or emergency stop, so you really got to stand on that brake pedal the trailer brakes are going to do the same thing. So it just makes your driving experience a little better and a little more manageable. So to control how much power is actually being sent back to your trailer brakes, we're gonna have a knob up here, which this is the output control. It goes from 0.6, if we rotate that knob, it'll go all the way up to 9.9. .9. So as I said, this is how much power is gonna be sent back to the brakes. And usually a good starting point is about halfway. So maybe around five, four and a half, something like that. So if you put it halfway and you hit the brakes and you feel your trailer kind of dragging, you can turn that power down. If you apply the brakes and you feel like the trailer is kind of pushing you, like it's not stopping hard enough, you can turn that power up and fix that issue. So it's kind of just depend on how much weight you're pulling behind you, but regardless of how much you are, you're going to be able to adjust the controller to give you the best experience. Now, last but not least, is this manual override switch. So when you push this in, you can see the power increasing to the trailer brakes. Now, when you hit this, only the trailer brakes will be applied. And you would typically use this in a, a situation where, say, the trailer starts to sway a little bit, kind of start to get away from you. What you can do is apply that manual override. It will slowly apply the brakes on just the trailer and straighten it back out for you. So the controller is going to be able to work with trailers that have one all the way up to four axles. And something that's pretty cool too is that this is going to have an automatic reduced power output whenever you're sitting still. So say for example, at a red light or railroad crossing, something like that. What it's gonna do is reduce that power going back to your trailer brakes. That way you're not putting that unnecessary wear and tear on your trailer brakes whenever you don't need to be using them. 
So at the end of the day, a brake controller you really can't go wrong with. If you're looking for simplicity and just something to get the job done that'll look good, this is definitely going to check all the boxes, at least in my opinion. Now, if you're looking for a brake controller that is even less noticeable, that has a lot more bells and whistles and features, one I really like is the Kurt Spectrum. And that more or less is just a knob that will go onto your dash. It almost kind of resembles a knob like this. So it's gonna look pretty factory and give you a whole lot of features that you're able to use and do a ton of different things with. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is super easy. I think anyone should be able to do it. More or less, you're just going to have to plug the connector in to a factory port underneath the dash here and simply just mount up your brake controller. So it shouldn't take you hardly any time at all or really give you any issues. But speaking of that, let's go ahead and do it together now. To begin our install, we're gonna first need to locate our factory connector plug. And that's located underneath the driver's side of the dashboard here. But to make life a little bit easier to be able to get to it, we're first going to remove a small panel located right here. So we're gonna have a few fasteners to remove to get this panel off. First one we're gonna do is this plastic pushpin style fastener right here in the corner. It's a little tight, so you might have to be a little patient, but what you can do to get that out is take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver will work even. I'm just gonna have to pry underneath the head of it. And then if we move over to this corner here by our ODB plug, we're gonna have two seven millimeter screws that we can pull out. And here towards the firewall here in the center, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut that we need to remove. Then if we kind of work our way over here on the side, right here in this little pocket, there's going to be another 10 millimeter. So once we have that out, our panel should kind of drop down and we can kind of just slide it off to the side like this. With that panel out of the way, if you look kind of up underneath the dash here in the center, we're going to have this plug right here. Now this is the one we're looking for. So to just give us a little more room, what you can do is kind of just pull down on that plug and it'll kind of pop out that little plastic retainer there and give us a little extra length. So there is a, what's called a dummy plug inside of there, and it's just an MP plug to help keep the terminals inside protected. So we're gonna have to remove that. This little clip here, if you kind of lift up on it with your thumb, you can pull that dummy plug out. So we'll set that off to the side. And then what we're gonna do is take our adapter plug and this simply just lines up and plugs right in. So now we can find a spot where we want to mount up our brake controller bracket. So we have a couple different options. You can do it pretty much anywhere along this panel here on the dashboard as long as there's nothing behind there that you can actually screw into. But what we're going to do is actually mount it to this little door here that is covering up our fuse panels. There's nothing behind there. We have a lot of room to work and it's out of the way and should look pretty good too. So we'll take our bracket. You want to make sure it's nice and level and where you want it. Put a couple of marks there. So I'm just going to hold it in place and use the provided screws to secure it down. At this point we can grab our brake controller and secure it to the bracket. So on each side of the brake controller there's going to be two holes there. So those are going to line up 
with the holes in our bracket, we can take the provided screws. And I'm just going to get all of them started. That way the brake controller will kind of hold itself up. We can position it where we want it and then just snug them down. Once we have them all in there, we can just grab a small Phillips screwdriver. Kind of just snug them all down. You don't have to crank down on these. You just want to kind of run them down until the bolt stops and give them just a little bit extra. From there, super straightforward. Our adapter plug here that we plugged in earlier will just connect to our brake controller plug, like so. And now what I'll do is just kind of clean up our wiring a little bit and I'll show you the way it looks once I'm done. So like I said, I cleaned up our wiring. I did use a little bit of wire loom that you can pick up separately here at E-Trailer to cover up the wires that you can see behind our brake controller. And from there, I just used a few zip ties to kind of bundle all of our wiring up underneath the dash. Now, whenever you do this, just make sure to avoid any moving components like your gas and brake pedal, as well as your steering column. Now we can go ahead and take that panel that we lowered down earlier and just resecure that the same way. So now it is a good idea to plug into your trailer. That way we can just test our brake controller. So in our case, we plugged it in, it calibrated, and two dots appear, meaning that our trailer is connected. If you hit our manual override, you can see that voltage is being sent out, so we know it's working properly. Now, whenever you do plug in your trailer, this will need to self-calibrate. So if for example, you plug in and a RC appears on the screen. That means you're gonna to have to recalibrate it. And all you have to do is simply unplug your trailer, plug it back in and give it a minute to think. But once it does calibrate, these two dots will come up and then you're able to test your controller out. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt TriFlex Trailer Brake Controller on our 2020 Ford Explorer.